Raven County Board of Commissioners regular session for Monday, March 5th. There's no one session. If you'd put your phones on silent ring, please. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Weiner? Here. Commissioner McCabe? Here. Commissioner Sampson? Here. Commissioner Tyson? Here. Vice Chairman Dacey? Here. Chairman Mark? Here. Can we stand for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody by here, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you today ask for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to participate in important decisions. Allow us to grow closer as a group and support the bond of our community. Fill us with your grace as you make decisions that might affect the community and continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish and for the pursuit of truth, for the greatest of glory to you and for the service of humanity, we ask these in your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> You've all had an opportunity to look over the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? There are no Make changes. I can entertain a motion. I move. All in favor say aye. 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 Next is petition of citizens. Okay, I guess that falls upon me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we've got uh, seven people here that have uh, signed up for this evening. Michael Satcher? Shocked. Forgive Shocked. me, sir. <laughs> I, I do apologize. If you'd give us your name and your place where you live. Yeah. I'm uh, Michael Schachter. I live at 1711 Tuscarora Rims Road in Craven County. And Mr. Jones's district there. I would like to thank the uh, Craven County Board of Commissioners for postponing a decision on the uh, resolution to support the construction of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline until there was an opportunity uh, for public comment, so I thank you. Um, the representatives from Duke will, of course, tout the benefits of the ACP. And to be clear, I'm definitely not in favor, uh, I'm definitely in favor of economic development in our county. Uh, beyond, you know, I'd like to see beyond Cherry Point, Weyerhaeuser, Bosch, and Moen. I speak for myself here as a 40-year resident of Craven County and for other residents of this county who you represent. <coughs> the Atlantic Coast Pipeline will have little benefit, if any, to our county and to the citizens of Eastern North Carolina either now or in the future. I could talk about the possible environmental damage as the pipeline crosses 300 North Carolina waterways, including the Noose River. I could talk about environmental justice as the pipeline goes through Native American lands and some of the poorest communities in eastern North Carolina. I took, could talk about methane leaks into our air from the fracked fossil fuel gas that will continue to increase the heating of our Earth's atmosphere and oceans. Fracked gas is definitely <coughs> not clean energy. But let me talk a bit about the economic effects Cra uh, on Craven County residents. We will be paying for the outcome of the ACP even before it is built. Duke Energy has proposed a rate hike for electricity starting with raising the base mandatory rate from $11.3 to $19.5. It's really should $11.13 to $19.50, I'm sorry. A 75% increase. That is the required payment before any electricity is even turned on or used. This will affect all consumers, but especially the poor minorities and the elderly on low and fixed income. And Duke also is also asking 
for an increased payment in the per kilowatt rate, uh, which will be 16.7% increase in resident for residential customers, an average increase of $17.80 per month. Duke Energy, as a profitable, powerful monopoly corporation in North Carolina, proposes to use half of the money from our increased payment in that rate increase to build electrical generators fueled by that frack gas from Pennsylvania through West Virginia that they hope will be coming into the proposed pipeline. Uh, by the way, most of, the, uh, almost, most of the other half from the payments as consumers will go to cleaning up the coal ash mess. We are being asked to pay for their mistakes. And that's just the beginning for us as consumers. Paying for the pipeline because, that's just the beginning of us paying for the pipeline, because once it is built, there will be even more rate increases to maintain Duke's guaranteed 14% return. But there are alternatives to building the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Does that mean I have? Yep, four minutes. Uh-huh. Can I finish? Uh, Can I say, uh, all right. Make one sentence, that's it. One sentence, all right. Uh -huh. uh, our area and the entire state would be actually, would actually benefit from the increased development and use of truly renewable energy resources such as solar, wind, and geothermal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And, uh, uh, and Robert Golden? That was close. Yes, uh, my name is Robert Golden. I'm a resident of 494 Alexis Drive uh, in uh, New Bern in Craven County. Um, I would like to speak against the uh, resolution in favor of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Uh, it's not quite clear to me why this resolution is out there, given the fact that the governor has already, uh, the state has already given a go ahead. Uh, and I, I am a little curious about the source, which I assume is Duke Energy. Um, the fact is, in the last 30 years in the United States, there have been almost 8,000 pipeline explosions with over 500 killed and $7 billion in damages. Um, this is dangerous stuff. Um, another interesting point is, and it just came out today, uh, Duke Energy spends approximately $80 million per year to influence government officials, civic leaders, news media, and the public. They have a staff of 105 and a $20 million budget for public relations. The fact is, we as consumers uh, pay for uh, their efforts uh, to uh, make them look good. Um, it's in Duke's interest uh, to claim a demand for a pipeline that they, in fact, have a financial interest in building. And I do have a document that, if it's at all possible, I'd like to enter in the record. If I can't, I can't, but I think it's interesting information. You can give it to the candidate, the clerk. All right, I'll give it to the secretary. Thank you very much. Um, they have an interest in, and in the, this, the document uh, explains the rather complicated financial interest, but the fact is that Duke will make money from building this pipeline. Uh, they don't have to really uh, indicate, uh, they don't have to, we have to take their word that there will be a demand for the pipeline. The reality is that uh, although the economy is growing, energy use is relatively flat uh, because of increased energy efficiency, some of which is in this building itself, uh, and also because of increased use of renewables. Uh, the, the pipeline is not needed now. It may never be needed, but the fact is whether it's needed or not, we as consumers will pay the bill. Um, thank you for your time. Richard Friend. Richard Friend, uh, 3507 Taylor Street, New Bern, and obviously Craven County. Uh, good evening, uh, commissioners and Chairman Marks. Um, it's a pleasure speaking with you again about our request that you demonstrate support um, of equal rights for women by passing a resolution supporting the Equal Rights Amendment. 
In the past, I've spoken about the moral obligations we have, we all have, for supporting this amendment. <clears throat> Those moral obligations still exist and will not be extinguished until the North Carolina legislature does what is right and passes the Equal Rights Amendment. At a previous session, there was some suggestion by another speaker that there were substantial legal impediments to the amendment and that such impediments should be used by you as an excuse not to act. Uh, to remedy that suggestion, I brought for you tonight copies of a well-respected law journal for your edification. Uh, the William and Mary Journal of Women in the Law is a highly respected journal published by the College of Wil William and Mary. This article entitled uh, the Equal Rights Amendment, Why the ERA Remains Legally Viable and Properly Before the States, directly addresses those issues previously raised by the other speaker. And this is a well-documented, well-respected article. It's cited if you, uh, if you search for uh, documents uh, looking for the legal questions surrounding the viability of the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, this document is at the top of the hit list. It's, um, it's well worth reading. Uh, I request that you uh, uh, take a look at it and then take the appropriate action and uh, pass a resolution supporting the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, I have given copies for each of you to the, uh, the clerk. And thank, thank you. you very much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Helen Robinson. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Helen Robinson, 1906 Cayenne Court. New York. It's been eight months since we started working on this equal rights thing. Last summer, we began attending these <coughs> monthly meetings asking for your support. I've learned some things about how local government functions, and I've also seen how much you guys do for our community, and I want to thank you for that. <coughs> We've watched the animal people persist as they continue to raise the problem of animal cruelty. <clears throat> we have added to our numbers and we're keeping on, so here we are again. The elections of 2018 are coming. We know it may take more time and work before enough people in enough states are really willing to stand up for equal rights for women. But we do understand that it took 100 years after the suffragettes started working in 1820 to pass the 19th Amendment in 1920. Black men received the right to vote in 1870. It was 50 more years before women of any race were empowered to vote in the United States. We understand it could probably take 100 years to get where we're going right now to see that the, the rest of our basic rights are protected by the Constitution. <clears throat> the question is sometimes asked why we aren't satisfied, why we aren't satisfied with the protection that we're given by current laws. I want to speak to that for about two minutes and nine seconds. <laughs> Uh, um, Six seconds. I think that you can understand that it's hard for us to trust in existing laws and regulations when some people are steadily working to deregulate anything and everything. It's really not a big secret that some folks are trying to use changes in federal laws and regulations and new executive orders to get rid of rules that seem to us like reasonable protections. I want to give you a few quick examples. Thirteen months ago, in the wisdom of the U.S. Congress, a new law was passed rescinding a restriction that was passed after Sandy Hook, limiting the sale of weapons to severely mentally ill people who had been deemed incompetent. Congress apparently believes that severely mentally 
ill people should be allowed their weapons. Over the past year, dozens and dozens of federal regulations protecting our environment have been defunded or rolled back, threatening our water, our air, our soil. These studies have been done by the National Geographic magazine, which is not known traditionally to be particularly an edgy publication. The third example I want to give you quickly is that an executive order was signed recently revoking fair pay and safe workplace rules for women in large companies with government contracts. Protections for women gone with a presidential signature. Maybe you can understand why we're worried and why we're pushing for constitutional protection. So we will persist. We'll be here working and waiting. Thank you for your time. Thank Seven you. seconds left. <laughs> Ray Griffin. Amen. God bless you guys. And I'm sitting here thinking, fast forward, North Carolina, Ray Griffin, uh, Brother Sampson and all them that worked many years ago on the Ten Commandments. I think you're the only one here now that worked on those, uh, that was participating. And I want to talk about the situation we're in today. Uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, My anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they may say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us anymore. And what has happened in our school system? I'll deal with the county uh, board system or Craven County school system and they flat refuse to even have anything to do with the Ten Commandments. We have kicked God out of the schools and we see the results of what is going on today. We see what happened down in Florida. Back years ago, in Jerry Prescott, many of you probably know him, taught school. Well, a uh, guy down in Pembroke County in Industrial Arts, we made gun racks. We made them for a fundraiser, put them in the back of our cars back in the 70s and in the trucks. And we took our guns to school and we'd leave school and go hunting or whatever. We never had a problem like we're having today. It's really sad the situation has really changed. We have today kids that are killing kids. We have babies that are being are born babies. We have uh, drinking girls and boys, and I work with the police department, and I remember gangs we used to break up. One out of every five girl in high school now has some kind of SDSs, some kind of sensitive uh, transmitted diseases. But the Board of Education, I got a letter back from them simply saying we cannot do this. We cannot do anything with the Ten Commandments. I thank Brother Sampson for that night of his stand and all them that stood that night and said we need the Ten Commandments. What is happening in our school system? We had a senator the other day said that something is going on. We don't understand what's going on, but what we're doing is not working. We need to put the Ten Commandments back in the school. The other day, if you've seen on the news, they are doing this thing, putting up banners that says, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not murder, and marquees and different things. Isn't it sad that that was in the school system for over 200 and some years, and the Ten Commandments saying, thou shalt not murder, and now today they want to put it back just in one banner. And it's sad they made a banner, thou shalt not steal, because so many of the kids were taking stuff out of the locker room. And it's sad that they weren't in the school system for over 200 and some years until in the 60s and 70s and they decided to take the Ten Commandments out, do without prayer, take out the name of Jesus, do everything they can to shut down the Word of God and look where our school system is going today. Look what happened and nothing is going to change unless we change and we do something different. Thou <clears throat> shalt not murder. Sad what is going on. Our kids today seem to have nothing to do. They're hung up in technology. They're hung up in computers. Matter of fact, there's a big game out tonight now that they are telling people not to watch because they, they are not to buy because the children are getting hung up in it and they're watching it. And all they do is spend time coming home from school and watching these games of violence and different things. When used to as children, we got out and we done, we went hunting. We didn't have any problem. We didn't shoot anybody. But today, it's just a normal things it seems ever since 911 to come and just take a gun to school and shoot some people but remember what it said it said in that day 
are these not these evils coming upon us because our God is not among us. We've kicked God out, put the devil in, let him go, do what he wants to do, and we simply are sitting idly by and say there's no better way, no remedy, but there is a remedy. We can do something. We stand up. People like the Board of Education don't want to listen to nothing that is of reason. I got back this letter from the lawyer said we can't do it. Simply said they're afraid to even stand up and take and make a change. Thank Amen. you, Reverend. <coughs> Mr. Hal James. I'm Hal James. I live at 305 Calico Drive in Craven County, and I'm the chairman of the Coastal Carolina Taxpayers Association. And on behalf of taxpaying citizens, I have two observations on tonight's agenda. The first is the social services budget amendment. It's just $40,000 to add to the revenue account for the low income energy assistance program. According to the attachment on the subject, that brings the total of that budget item to $397,395. The attachment also shows that the total for North Carolina is $36,402,610. The last federal budget figure that I could find was for 2011, and that was $3.3 billion. Who knows what it is now? now? Who gets all that money? Well, in much of Craven County, it's the city of New Bern. Uh, the fellow that just spoke before me mentioned that uh, Duke Power gets a lot of it. But anyway, in New Bern, they have a monopoly on electricity sales, and it keeps the price very high. And I resent paying taxes in New Bern without representation. Does that sound familiar? The economic development report. There's no way to tell from the agenda that what Mr. Downs is going to report. I hope he plans to shed some light on the results of the big $822,000 gift the Moen Corporation received from the taxpaying citizens. Has Moen fulfilled its promises? I've discovered that the memorandum of understanding was a little vague on that subject. In that document, Moen agreed to create 75 jobs paying an average of $619 per week. I talked to two people who were employed to work at Moen by an intermediary company named Pick Group. I was told that Pick was paid for their labor and kept a substantial amount, around 40%. One man said he received $10 per hour and the other $750 per hour. One said that after he was employed there three years, he could tell that he would never get enough hours to qualify for any employment benefits other than the wages. He also said he was shuffled around among Moen, Bosch, Carolina Technical Plastics, and several other corporations. The other man said he never got over 20 hours at $7 and a half per week in any one week. That's less than $150 per week. Where are all those high paying jobs promised? Did they ever materialize? I really would like to know. I'd like to know more about the uh, employment practices of these corporations because I don't think they're being fair to the hardworking citizens of Craven County and nearby counties. Thank you. Glenn Fink. Mr. Glenn Fink. Again, I'm Glenn Fink, uh, 646 Goose Creek Road, and I'm going to be brief. I speak in favor of the pipeline. It was said this evening that customers will pay for the pipeline, and that's true. That's a well-known, well-founded business model. That's who pays for things as uh, consumers of those items. What most failed to realize is the alternatives that was uh, suggested around uh, the, uh, uh, the renewable energies is that most of uh, those are highly subsidized by the government, and uh, we've seen a lot of the uh, solar panels go up. You folks pass some legislation or ordinances around that because of the concern that will, will end up causing in the future. But what most people don't realize is a high portion of those are not paid by consumers. They're paid by taxpayers because of the subsidies. So I'm in favor of clean renewable, I mean, I'm in favor of clean fossil fuels for our uh, area of the country. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that uh, concludes the public comment section of this evening's agenda. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda, minutes of February 19th, tax releases and refunds, military family of the quarter, and uh, do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. a roll call vote, please. 
Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McKay? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Vice Chairman Daisy? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Okay. Jeff Merritt for the Department <coughs> of Social Services budget amendment. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners, County Manager. Mm -hmm. I bring before you tonight a budget amendment regarding our low income energy assistance program and a reallocation of funds from the state government. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, let's have a motion first. So I move. Second. Discussion. Mr. Lyon? Commissioner Lyon? Jeff, uh, we've increased by 40000 Catawba and Mecklenburg have decreased by 1.15 million. Now, is that decreased because they could not use the funds? It was taken away from them. They returned it. How how was how was the counties were asked to look and see their rate of their rate of spending, um, and that program runs to the end of March 31st and look at their need and counties were asked to see if there was still more of a need in the community based upon who was coming in and the amount of funds that were being ex extended. So counties actually were able to, you know, ask for those funds or allow funds to be reverted. But the state ultimately has the power to revert funds, you know, without any, the county requesting any be given back or asked for any more. All right, so we requested this amount? Yes. Where, where do we stand right now on our initial 357000 Right now, um, without that 40000 there's $30,995 left. I think that was as of 410 this afternoon. And do you know how many people that served? I don't know how many people that served overall. I've got some numbers for the last week, last four weeks, how many approved applications that we've had, and that doesn't count the number of people that are in the households. So I can't do it as that total. How many, how many households? Mm, the week of... February 1st through February 7th, 129 households. The week of February 14th, I mean, excuse me, February 8th through February 14th, 96 households. The week of February 15th through February 21st, 92 households. And the week of February 22nd through February 28th was 65 households. Now, can I continue? Yeah. Uh, are any of these duplicates, how do we know they're do we keep a record? Do we well, have duplication? This system is actually through the through our NC FAST system now, so it tracks it through there. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any other discussion? Just curious, I mean, people typically apply for this, or you seek them out based on their no, income? No, pe people typically apply. <coughs> okay. They're aware of the dates of well, when this it starts. Was additional federal funds. That, that came available to the state of North Carolina, some of this pot that you're pulling from now? This is actually the original amount of funds that were given to the state of North Carolina in the energy block grant that were set out for LEAP funds. So this is not any additional new funds. They're staying within the amount of funds that were given to the state. They're just moving some around to different counties based upon need. Two counties gave $1.15 million back. Mm -hmm. This is a mandated item. Yes, leaves a mandated program. We run the program until the money is exhausted or either March 31st comes. So basically the county is just holding the money and we're told to pay it out. Right, and any money that's not spent in a March, the state will take back. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. So move. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Vice Chairman Dacey? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Timothy Downs, Economic Development. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, a little maybe tardy in this update, but uh, you all have had busy calendars, so I'm about a month late. But nevertheless, here to give you my economic development update for the past quarter. Um, as usual, I'll follow my, my normal format, starting with product development. The, uh, the map that you see on the overhead, and I'll point to it so that we're just very clear, 
the, the part there that says Craven 26. Pointing that out, uh, product development is something that we've spent a lot of time talking about within economic development and the Craven 100 Alliance. Uh, this parcel that you see outlined in blue on the map is uh, affect affectionately known as Craven 26 through Warehouser. It's Warehouser Real Estate Development Property. And they're wanting to put this property into um, active development. So uh, earlier this, excuse me, in February, I placed this parcel into the Duke Site Readiness Program application series, and they've accepted it. So this 650 acres will go through the Duke Site Readiness Program, which as a refresher, we did one ourselves last year. But basically it means they're gonna evaluate the site from A to Z, uh, location, utilities, other infrastructure, soils, wetlands, uh, and, and things like rail and, and others like that. So it's a good, uh, good program for us to get a site like this. And in fact, this, uh, this site is contiguous to about another thousand acres that Weyerhaeuser has up there that potentially could be added all together and make a mega site. And Weyerhaeuser's pretty excited about that. And good news, additional good news from my point of view is there's no cost to the county for this. Weyerhaeuser's gonna foot the bill for that. And obviously with the Duke program, they'll be be covering the cost of that evaluation. Also, uh, with the county's help, we were able to complete the uh, Executive Parkway extension and a new road at the park. If you haven't been out there, I'd suggest that you go out and take a look at it. It's turned out very nice. The contractor did a very nice job for us, and I think all of us that have been a part of that process and, and uh, seeing the end result are happy with that. In addition, because of that road development, we're now looking at some of the parcels out there and we've had a local uh, firm do some initial concepts of, of a lot at the park, uh, placing about a 20,000 uh, square foot facility and evaluating stormwater and those sorts of things. So we have a preliminary plan for one of those lots. Um, and if you'd like more information on that, I can talk, I can talk more about it. Um, next to business recruitment, uh, last month I took a trip to Dallas. And why this is significant is I met with seven site selection consulting firms and these are firms like Jones Lang LaSalle and Moore Partners and NAI Robert uh, Smith. And um, so the, the point is, is to get our name out as a county, to express to these folks who do this on a daily basis, trying to cite uh, companies, relocations and other things, to expose them to who we are as a county. Uh, it was a very good trip. Again, made contact with all these site selection consultants and really the, the, the bottom line with those sorts of interactions are, again, opening their eyes to, to the possibilities that we have in our county. Um, as I've said to you many times, when we market ourselves, we're, we're sharing with the world all the great things that we have here in Craven County. Also, the things, the, the companies that are already being successful here, like a BSH and, and Moen and, and others. So it was a very good trip. Um, also, if I can get this to work. As I've mentioned to you in the past, uh, we've worked locally with Lenore County and Wayne County in establishing the uh, North Carolina Aerospace Corridor. We now have, through the help of the um, Southeast Partnership, a, a new website, and this is an active website, and you can see it's, it's pretty uh, basic. I can't get my mouse to work. I'll just do it the other way here. It's pretty basic. Uh, but it shows all the attributes of our, of our counties. And most of all, getting back to the first page, you can see our map there that um, shows the various assets. But again, this is a marketing tool for us. We've gotten a lot of good feedback. And again, in talking with some of these site selection consultants out in Dallas uh, and, and others through the Southeast Partnership, I'm very excited to see uh, an asset like this pulled together. So that's very good. Um, 27 site selection requests since, last, since my last update to you all. Uh, ask any developer in our area, ask any developer probably in the southeast of the United States, maybe even the entire United States, activity is way up. Uh, there's been a lot more activity as far as looking to relocate, looking to locate new facilities. And so um, the more activity we have, the more chances we have. And I'm happy to report that I just found out today that we made the short list for a fairly sizable project uh, the overall investment is about $8 million initially, and then over five years, creation of almost 500 jobs. So again, we've made that short list, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, also, the uh, next edition of the Craven County Magazine, uh, hopefully all of you have seen last year's edition, but the 2018 edition will be out any day now. 
So I'm pretty excited about that. Again, we've gotten very good feedback on that, and many of our partners in the region have seen our magazine and, again, pushing that out to beyond our region, beyond our state. Um, on to business retention and expansion. Currently working with Jack and the Craven Hunter Alliance on a project for one of our existing industries in the industrial park. It's a small project, but it hopefully will leapfrog into a, uh, a bigger project for them. Currently about 15 jobs and about a million dollar investment, uh, which again should leverage into uh, uh, about 40 jobs uh, at the next phase. So that's exciting. Um, and hopefully have more to, to tell you about that at our next meeting. Small business and entrepreneurial development. Uh, as you're well aware, the Entrepreneur Center is open. Uh, I'm happy to report that we have over 30 members and we've got all of our offices filled. Uh, it's been very successful <laughs> in spite of our inability to actually get out and promote ourselves. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're looking very hard right now at, at uh, trying to come up with creative ways to use the limited funds that we have to promote the facility, attract new members to come in there. But we have promoted it to uh, a variety of folks who are, uh, say, outside of the target audience, and, and we've, we've done pretty well. I had a, a visit with the high school students from New Bern from one of the business marketing classes out there. They, they loved it, and they wanted to, to see more. Uh, we met, actually shared it with the Carteret County Chamber, uh, because if you're familiar with Carteret County down in Moorhead City, they actually have their own small incubator and they've been trying to figure out how to make it successful, so they came up to see us and, and what we've done so far. So those are all positive signs as far as the, the Entrepreneur Center goes. And then lastly, training and workforce development. Hopefully you all heard or saw some of the news about on February 6th, we had the CTE Expo. It was our first uh, expo of that sort, and just a real quick rundown of how it worked. We had over 15 companies there. We had the various teachers from the high schools, as well as uh, instructors and other uh, resource people from the community college in various pods. And the idea was that the students that come through would get to experience what it would be like to take classes in high school, then move on to community college, and then move on to an actual position here in Craven County. So all eighth graders in the entire county came through this event. It was over 1,200. Uh, and it was, again, very successful by all accounts, the folks that were there, the the community college, the, the, um, the industrial people, and uh, obviously the schools felt it was very successful. We're going to be doing that on an annual basis. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. And also to mention the, uh, the industry folks that were there were uh, very pleased at the effort. And, and again, that's what this is all about. You've heard me talk about workforce development a lot. It's really about making the effort to, to not leave any stone unturned as far as doing what we can do locally to support our existing pipeline to grow that pipeline and then to attract other folks in. So again, very successful event. Um, I've been making some rounds over the past couple weeks with the college. Again, another program you've heard me talk about, but it's really uh, gaining some steam, and that's a countywide apprenticeship program. Uh, BSH Home Appliances, Bosch, they are well known for their apprenticeship program, and apprenticeships are another area of workforce development that it's gaining a lot of traction across the United States because people realize that the best way to get good employees in there and to keep good employees is to get them ingrained in your culture, to train them up the way that you want them trained up, and to ensure that they have the skills, soft and technical, to uh, make sure they can do the work. So the community colleges right now, they've been awarded a $200,000 grant from the, from the Duke Foundation, and that grant will pay for 17 students uh, I say students, that's probably not completely accurate, but 17 individuals to go through an apprenticeship program. It's 8,000 hours of both classwork and uh, floor time within an industry. We've already got three industries signed up. We've got BSH uh, as a partner. They're not participating because they already have their own program, and we've been out talking to others. But again, this is great for us because it takes our own uh, either existing employees in some cases, but also the students that graduate high school jump right into an apprenticeship program, they become a journeyman, and at the point when they're a journeyman after those 8,000 hours, they're either employed at that point with that industry or can be going anywhere else within our county or anywhere else for that matter. But again, this is something that a program that's um, governed, if you will, by the state as well as the federal government as far as apprenticeships and journeymen and that sort of thing. So they'll actually have a card when they're finished. So it's pretty exciting. All the, again, all the industry that we've talked to, Hatteras, Craven Wood Energy, uh, International Paper, Carolina Technic Plastics, Chatsworth, Moen, they're all excited about it and all very much eager to, to participate. 
And so the bigger picture of this is that we'll establish this apprenticeship program for an ongoing, in an ongoing way so that when uh, the next batch of students are ready within the schools, they'll not just have BSH to choose from as far as apprenticeship, but they'll have BSH and Hatteras and Carolina Technical Plastics and on and on and on so that we can place 12, 15 a year if we're, if we're real successful. So again, something that's, that's uh, I think, really promising for us here in the county. Um, oh, there it is. So this is the next cool thing we've done. At no cost to, to us, it's just been some staff time and some volunteers within our, our collaboration. We have now created this new logo for workforce development across our county. Um, I've been working hard since I've been here to uh, bring resources together, and make sure there's not a lot of duplication of effort, certainly not any redundancy, uh, but also to, to um, improve the interaction with our local industry when it comes to workforce development. There's a lot of resources out there, but it's really difficult as an employer to get through those resources and understand what fits and what doesn't fit. What could work for you as a, as a person hiring people or needing to train people and what's, what's not. So we've been working hard to do that. So now anything within the county that is considered workforce development will be under this new brand and this new logo. Mm -hmm. um, now, we all realize, with, as a group, we realize that this might get confusing because we labeled our job fair Craven Works to begin with, but that's just one of the elements now that's going to be under this Craven Works moniker. So, and speaking of the job fair um, announced to the world, uh, uh, and we'll be doing this many times in the next couple weeks, March 20 at the Craven, Craven County Convention Center at uh, 12 o'clock, we'll run from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock will be our uh, third annual Craven Works job fair. We already have 40 employers lined up, uh, many names that we'd all recognize, and uh, excited about getting to po possibly 60 or 65 employers this year. And one new thing we're doing this year, and this is not really for the public, mainly for you to understand, we've again decided to do a little new thing this year where we're having the first hour, and it'll be a preview hour from 11 to 12 a.m., excuse me, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., that first hour will be for high school students who have been hand selected by the schools who are undecided about what they're going to be doing come just a few months from now in June when they graduate. So the idea there is to bring them in and expose them again to the many opportunities that exist here in Craven County and uh, hopefully give them some guidance as to how, to how to connect. So again, we've got Hatteras, we've got BSH Home Appliances, we've got Craven County Schools, Craven County, a City of New Bern, and, and many, many more. So looking forward to another good event and have a lot of uh, good support for this event. The uh, ENC Media Group, I'd like to recognize them. They're doing a lot of promotion for us at no cost to the effort. So um, as always, I, I zipped right, th oh, I'm sorry, one last thing. Uh, right before the uh, commission meeting tonight, I was over, uh, you, you might remember me talking about a program called Weibo. Um, through the Entrepreneur Center, through a grant the Entrepreneur Center got, there was a program where we were able to train up uh, a select group of uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, and they had their graduation tonight. Uh, four out of the five folks that took the class or classes this term, which started back in uh, August, uh, graduated. But again, it's another way to grow our own, and uh, pretty excited about that. So, again, I probably went way too fast, but in the interest of time, happy to answer any questions. Any commissioners have any questions? I'd like to make a comment. Somebody sure. had asked a few questions earlier about mm -hmm. the Molin project. Mm -hmm. Since I was involved in that from the get-go, I'd like to, to maybe, if you don't have time or not prepared to comment on some of the questions, maybe you could write them down and, and send it to us. I, I will say this. I think that was a fantastic project. What What is the value of that building now? Oh, I d I, it's Probably not that high. It, the property itself is probably more around 15, I think, in total. Yeah, uh, I can say for sure they did meet their commitment. We didn't. We we uh, as a provision in the contract that they signed, we weren't to pay out the final installment of that grant until they proven that they had proven that they'd filled those positions. I know for certain those positions are filled and still operating. And in fact, Jack and I were in the same room when this happened. Uh, Miss Yvonne Wold. Uh, announced to us that they're already talking about an expansion at that facility. So it was well worth the effort of us to help them. And sometimes those things create synergy. I oh, absolutely. Mean, when, I, when I pick up the uh, paper, occasionally they're advertising for truck drivers starting to pay at $70,000. Right. We, the community college uh, implemented a truck 
training, driving. Yep, training CDL, facility, CDL yeah, program. CDL yeah. license. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, that's a that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Uh, they're at. I don't know how many people are they employed now. Well, their their direct employment, which again, because they have they always have a component that's seasonal or, or con contractual, their direct component <laughs> is over 900 now. And their total numbers, total bodies out they there. Do use, they do use temporary services. They do. I think most, many of your manufacturers do now. Absolutely. And the reason is, yeah. is that I'm told is that there's such a high turnover rate among uh, new employees that they don't want to go through all the process. That's correct. Putting you on their payroll and and you not showing up for work or, or showing up not prepared to work or just. Yep. Unfortunately, that's the reality. Ready, and so they, they want to test you out for, for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mm -hmm. know how long that is, but I think it's uh, six months is what I've heard. Mm -hmm. uh, it it so depends on the position. Policy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it very much so. Um, but an interesting development for us here in, in this county, again, because workforce development has become such a challenge, uh, mm -hmm. but Moen and others, including BSH and, and Hatteras, there was a period of um, many years where they would only bring in new people that were that hourly, uh, that hourly class. They would only bring them in through a staffing agency. Well, that's changing now because what they're realizing is that they can find someone, and if they if they have the requisite skill, if they have the requisite soft skills, they'll bring them on as a direct hire. So well, many of our our manufacturers in the area are starting to do that. Which is is a good thing because it allows for that. You you if you're that person, you don't have to go through a staffing agency and and wonder. Well, okay, now I have to do this for three months maybe and wonder if I'm going to have a permanent position. You can start from day one and have that permanent position. So, what is the tax uh, property tax county manager on fifteen million? It's about seventy nine thousand dollars a year. Seventy nine a year. Mm -hmm. I'm not so the county manager, but I did do the math. <laughs> <laughs> I can also tell you, and, and this is this is straight from the Moen folks, that because they did what they did here, they were able to make their expansion happen, a reality up in Lenore County. That expansion then increased the actual product output from our facility here. And as you mentioned, there's the trucking that goes between New Bern and Kinston on a daily basis. And I know for certain that many of the folks that have gotten their CDL training at our community college have become drivers for Moen in our county. So. It, you know, there is there is a, a, a multiplying effect with some and of the they things. They are looking to expand at our current facility. That's what they've said, yes. Yeah. And I, you know, right. they're they're doing very well as a corporation. So, are they having any trouble finding employees? No more than anybody else, and and they're actually typically better at it because they um, they're able to their 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 entry level is less skilled because they have a, a very um, defined process for pr producing what they produce. If I can, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned you'd gone to Dallas and talked to some site selectors. Mm -hmm. Do you have the tools that you need when you go to these? Uh, We're working on it. We're working on it. Um, one of the things, I didn't mention it tonight, uh, hopefully I'll have the final plan in a couple weeks, but uh, one of the things that we have um, just undertaken in the past couple weeks is a full-blown marketing plan for economic development. This was paid for by the C1A. It's produced by a, a firm here in North Carolina that works for the Southeast region and does this sort of thing on a daily basis. And what that's going to result in is it's, I've seen the draft plan, but essentially what it does is it tell you in priority what, the, what you need to be doing. Now we've got a web, website. You all helped with that before. That's the top priority. Um, but then there's marketing materials beyond that. So we're getting there. There's some, there's some, uh, some tasks to undertake and over the, the next. The stuff that Duke Energy did for us, site. Uh, yep, that's part of it. And all that. That's part so of it. That yes, very much so. Very much so. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. I, oh, Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Craven 26. Uh, when you start talking about 1,600 possible acres that, uh, doing something with, you know, that's going to raise eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us the exact location of where this is? Okay, so our industrial park is right here at this intersection. And I'll point up here for this. That's our industrial park. So this is New Bern, down in the bottom right corner. Mm -hmm. Our industrial park is here. Tuscarora Rems uh, intersection is, uh, excuse me, right here, right at this bend. The Cove City is right about here. This entire, if I, if I can hold my hand steady enough, <laughs> uh, 
But that entire set of parcels there, about 90% of that belongs to Weyerhaeuser. And when you total it all up, it's well over uh, 1,600 acres. Um, and the reason this is chosen, one, Weyerhaeuser, uh, again, as I said, is, is um, they've now decided that they want to put this into the, to the development uh, uh, basket. But also because this has rail on one side, about almost a quarter mile within this just little parcel. Um, it has a transmission line, Duke Power transmission line that runs right to it. It also has great connectivity. Obviously, it has 70 and old 70 uh, bounding it on north and south. And then it has um, pretty good access to 70 by through Tuscarora Rim's exit. So all those things considered, it's a pretty good site to start with. Now, going through this program doesn't mean it's going to be developed. It just means they're going to evaluate it. And those of you that remember last year, for our parcel at the industrial park, what we get at the end is a report that says, these are the these are the highs, these are the lows, here's what you need to do to really develop it. And in the end, they might say it's just, just not worth it. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think we'll get that report, but that's what we'll get at the end. The, um, the sewer line that goes there to um, landfill, mm -hmm. is it in big enough capacity to assist? Well, that's, that's what has to be determined through this process, is they'll look at the capacities, they'll look at the, 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 the literal infrastructure capacity as well as the, the paper capacity or, or otherwise at the facilities. And it's very possible that the sewer might have to travel to Lenore County. Uh, that's, that's a reality. Um, but they'll look at all those things and let us know. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Sanford. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I'd just like to say that I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that they got that truck driving class out there to the community college because about three years ago, <clears throat> my son wanted to take it up, but he had to go somewhere else. He's driving a truck right now, but he's driving all over the country. He, but he, he had to go to a school in another area in order to get that training. So it's good that we got it here. We, our kids will be able to take it right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a big job, truck driving. They make good money. Yeah, too. And it's a, there's a huge demand for them right now. Any other commissioners? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, Timothy, can you, first of all, thank you very much. Sure. Um, can you comment on how the relationship is going with the Southeast Regional Partnership? And I would imagine that we're probably going to be looking to re-up that operation. Mm -hmm. Is that something mm -hmm. that you would advise that we do? Yeah, I, I, if you're asking me today, I say absolutely. The, the, the return on the investment from my point of view is, is well worth it. Um, just as a refresher, the Southeast Partnership, what they do for us is they, they find leads. They're a lead generation effort. Uh, they also are uh, a, a partner, arm in arm partner with marketing. Uh, the website that I showed you earlier, they were instrumental in getting that finalized and up and running. And if you take a chance to look at it, you'll see at the bottom, they're actually the contact information. As you can imagine, if there's three counties fighting for leads, you know, it's good to have at least one that can, that can take those leads. So I'd say absolutely. They've been very good to work with. Um, my experience, again, going to the various events, the one in Dallas last fall, I went out to um, Greenville, South Carolina with them. I also went out to Las Vegas. Um, Top-notch uh, group as far as what they do. And, and I think anybody that's been in business knows, you, you know, you, you do what you do and you do it well, you're going to be successful. They focus very much on marketing and lead generation, and they do it well. That doesn't mean that there aren't areas that I would suggest for improvement, but for us here in this county, I think they've been a very great partner. Um, the Small Business Development Center, mm -hmm. what sort of resources do you think you need and how might you go about getting them? Is it something that we need to be mindful of as we budget moving forward or how do you, how do you anticipate it dealing with those issues? Well, I, I, we've been successful because we've, um, I say we, I think the center's been successful because of the nature of, of the, um, the facility. And there are a few things I think that would be good, although I would not recommend that they come from us. Uh, it's just straightforward. Uh, there are partnerships with local industry that we need to make that we haven't fully exercised yet. Um, certainly, uh, staff is a question. That's a big question mark for us because if you don't have anyone there, then when something arises that needs addressing, then, you know, what do you do? And, and you might lose customers that way. But to staff someone there full time just doesn't make sense. So we're trying to find that, that happy medium right now. Okay. Uh, but to directly answer your question, I, I don't, I would not recommend anything at this point. 
Um, I think it's more of a, um, the volunteers that are involved, including myself, I think we're just trying to get to a point where we can figure out, you know, where we all can make the maximum impact. Um, a couple of months ago, we had the workforce development folks, the lady come mm -hmm. before us, and mm -hmm. she gave us a lot of economic information. Mm -hmm. um, how's the relationship going there? Well, again, <laughs> the folks that are actually doing the work, it's good. It's very good. We, um, we actually had a meeting this morning with a group that um, is trying to, again, coordinate the interaction between the resource providers, myself, the college, the Workforce Development Board, and industry. Because the worst thing you can do is knock on the door, you know, five times a week with five different people asking the same questions. So we've refined that. Uh, I think the partnership's good. I will say um, unequivocally, there is a lot of work to be done from the state perspective on workforce development. There's a lot of people who do this on a regular basis who still are asking what, what, what's going on. Um, but they're making an effort. Um, but I, I do think that's an area that if, we, if you care to talk further about it, I think there's a lot of room for improvement from a state level and a regional level. We, we should be clear here that the county pays absolutely nothing into the Workforce Development Board here. This That's is correct. solely a state and federal program. Right. This board has been accused of putting money into that agency, and in fact, it is not true at all. That's correct. Their, their money, their funding, and, and for the most part, they are a pass-through. Their funding comes from things like WIOA, the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. So they're really an, uh, a, a pass-through for the most part. But yes, that's correct. We don't The invitation don't that was all. extended to them to come before this board was so that we could be educated in understanding more about our economic activity. That's right. And, and that's it. Um, Timothy, finally, I, I just would ask, if, if at all possible, if you could maybe give us a little bit of a summary prior to your next presentation. Sure. Um, just so that we have a little bit of a sense as to where you're going, so we might be able to prepare questions and be thoughtful about Happy what to. it is that you're going to. Happy to. With the, and it may with also just help the, the public as well. The qualifier that some of this is uh, will be a mystery, right, maybe, because right. no, <laughs> you can't you, divulge yeah. everything. You got your super but, secret names right, for the project. Exactly. And and exactly. So. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Timothy, uh, I, I don't expect you to have this figure tonight, but could you give us an idea of approximately how many employees between Bosch and Moen and some of the other companies that you've been responsible for, uh, how many th uh, those numbers are? You mean as far as growth? Yeah. Sure. I can, I can definitely do that. Okay. Um, I can, well, from the projects that we've been directly involved with, there's been over 700. So, um, and, and I'm happy to say most of those have already been created. Um, and again, the, the bulk of that came with the BSH announcement back right. in late 2015. But when you add up Moen and BSH and Minji's and the others that we've, that we've been involved with, um, it's over 700. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you're doing a great job <laughs> on that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda is pending appointments. Adult Care Home Advisory Committee. We have a termination. Lorraine Mark, I think I know her. Uh, she is on the Social Service Board and she's on the Child Protection Agency and uh, she just can't handle it all. So she had to resign from that. <coughs> Craven County Community Ch Child Protection Team. Uh, quarterly, we have a Gail Horn. Item wishes to be reappointed. Uh, do I have a motion to reappoint? So moved. Second. Okay. Appointed by acclamation. Mary Mallard, Department of Juvenile Justice recommendation will be forthcoming. Do we know anything about that, Gwen? As of this week, they did not have a recommendation. Okay. Let that go. Uh, Child Protection Agency is the same thing. Craven County. Clean Sweep Committee. We have a De Debbie Kirkman, Board of Education. Mr. Is Chairman, may I comment on the second child protection team yeah. appointment? So that is a current appointment. Um, Mr. Kent Flowers, the Social Service Director, is a designated position. is due to be reappointed. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's, the, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. So do we need to move his reappointment? If you, if you okay. wish. I have a motion. Re move his reappointment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, 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 Graven County Clean Sweep Committee, Debbie Kirkman, we spoke about. Is uh, she still going to be appointed? Um, I don't have um, 
information on her. The okay. Board of Education is a required appointment on that board. Okay. And she is the designee that, that they are sending as of now. They have okay. not indicated any All right, thank you. in replacing her. And Eddie Games wishes to be reappointed. I have a motion to reappoint him. So, so move. Second. Uh, upcoming appointments, Regional Aging Advisory Board, Carolyn Bland and Thomas Pittman, and Voluntary Agricultural District, Diedrich Kilpatrick. Mm -hmm. County Attorney's Report. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The first matter before you tonight is a final acceptance of an offer to purchase real property located at 1111 William Street in New Bern property that the uh, county acquired along with the city from a tax foreclosure. The offer to purchase is for $1,000. The tax value is currently $4,000. Uh, you'll note that the total taxes at the time of foreclosure was about $13,000. That was primarily due to a, a demolition by the city of New Bern, um, who uh, basically paid um, for those costs. Uh, the board has previously approved it. It's been advertised for upset bids. There were no upset bids, and so it is back before you for final acceptance. I have a motion. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like, no, I, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> make a motion that we put this on hold until we can find that the, the people that they supposed to contact has been contacted. So I'd like to have this put on hold. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. And this one's already been foreclosed on, right? Yes, sir. What, who are we trying to contact? I'm talking to the individual to make sure, I, I want to make sure that they were contacted oh. before this happened. I think Commissioner Sampson's mm -hmm. concerned that, that, that to back up to the demolition by the city of New Bern, that all the people entitled to notice before the demolition were in fact notified. So you are asking, forgive me? Let, let, let it be held up until we make sure that all these people have been contacted. That the city has okay. contact, had contacted them? I made them. a contact because I'll let you know why. <clears throat> because I was before the city last meeting, and I didn't even know that my property was on, on the chopping block. And they hadn't even contacted the man. And I wasn't even planning on being out there. I happened to be down there and found this out. And I approached the board. And someone asked the question, where well, wasn't he contacted? Did, did you get a signature? Anybody signed that he was notified? They couldn't produce it. So I wanted to make sure the citizens are treated right. And they are, they are being contacted. The heirs are being contacted that these people know about what's going on. And I think it's high time that we looked out for the citizens who have been here all the time rather than accepting what Newburn sent over here and without investigation. And we want to make sure that these people have been, somebody has been contacted concerning that problem. Okay, do we have a motion? Is there a second? Right. The, the motion, motion is, is to table until, table. until table. further notice. Table, table until the next regular right. scheduled meeting. I second that motion. Mr. Chairman, um, if Mr. Sampson is in agreement, I believe Mr. Hicks would contact the city attorney just to check the file for how these demolitions took place and report back to you at the next meeting, Mr. Sampson, if that would be appropriate. Yeah, look at your concerns. Yes. Okay, for the next meeting. Yeah. There's no time of the essence on this <coughs> offer, sure. No, sir, not that I'm aware of. No, sir. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor are we, say are aye. Are we doing both or one? Well, we can do both of them at the same time if you okay. want to. Both. All right. Both. Madam Clerk, that was to refer both or to table both until yeah. the next program. I second. Yeah. Let's uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And Mr. Chairman, just at the end of the meeting, we'll be requesting a closed session uh, regarding the personnel matter. And that's all I have tonight. Okay. County manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. I'm sure glad I don't have a four-minute timer tonight because I <laughs> kept a list since I, I didn't have comments at your last meeting. 
Um, just to update you on a couple things going on in the county. Uh, first of all, on April 4th at 5.30, we'll be hosting the district meeting for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Uh, it's our first time hosting in some time, so at least we don't have to go to Wilmington this year. Certainly get to save on the travel time. That event starts at 5.30, and it will be a regional effort from counties that surround us uh, within an hour or so drive. So please do that. Also for your calendar, uh, May 30th is County Assembly Day in Raleigh. It's the annual trip we make up there to talk with our legislators who represent Craven County. Um, I look forward to it, I'm sure, like you do. That is an early day. We need to be there about 9 o'clock, and it's all the way through 5. So I'm going to go ahead and make you aware of that. Okay, uh, second thing. Last week I was asked to attend the News River Study Committee meeting in Raleigh. This is a joint effort between NCDOT, uh, NC Department of Environmental Quality and North Carolina Emergency <coughs> Management. This is an effort after Hurricane Matthew to look at long-term solutions uh, for flooding. Uh, of course, as we're well aware, Hurricane Matthew caused a lot of damage uh, from Raleigh to Craven County, along with uh, what Hurricane Floyd was back in the late 1990s. Certainly, uh, these events aren't that frequent, but when they are, they cause a tremendous amount of damage and there's a tremendous amount of disruption to folks' lives. Um, I can tell you, uh, there are some contracts in place right now with NC State University and AECOM, which is a consulting company, to do some hydraulic modeling to look at uh, the effects of rain and how it falls in the Noose River Basin, particularly around the Goldsboro area where we saw so much of that water where you had 12 to 15 inches of rain um, come forward and cause so much damage. One of the concerns I brought forward being at the end of the road here is that we make sure we're recognized in this, uh, in this exercise. A lot of what you see represents Raleigh to Kinston. And I, I had to make them aware, uh, and I believe they knew, that uh, the Noose River does not end in Kinston. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's kind of a smart comment, but quite frankly, most of their maps ended in Kinston, and I, that was troubling to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think for the commissioners, every single one of you, myself, my staff, who went out to Western Craven County after Hurricane Matthew, you saw what that river can do. <coughs> and I think some of the misinterpretation we get is folks aren't familiar with Craven County. They assume the Noose River looks like it does in New Bern in Coast City. And it's quite frankly a completely different optic. Uh, the Noose River here is much wider, mm -hmm. much deeper. And of course, when you get the western part of the county, it's not so much. Um, but I got some good news uh, from that. One of the things that we had advocated for greatly after Hurricane Matthew and even before was a river gauge in Craven County. I'm pleased to tell you that was placed at West Craven Middle School two weeks ago. We are beginning to test that data, um, and the state has been gracious in helping us fund that through the North Carolina Emergency Management. I want to thank Director Sprayberry for his hard work and finding the money within his budget. He certainly grasped the importance to us. And when I was able to share with him that it's great when we see data in Kinston during a storm and we know how the river is, but two days later we have no idea what it's going to look like in Craven County. And now we'll have that. Uh, hopefully we'll never have to use it. That's my hope, but it's there if we do. There will be two additional meetings, uh, one in March and one in April, to continue this topic. There's lots of data coming forward. I have a packet of information I will share with the board uh, that I, I brought back with me. I found it interesting. Um, there was some modeling on damage assessments, and we hear about these 10-year storm, 100-year storm, 1,000-year storm, and about what those effects, based on some of the modeling they've done. It was very interesting, uh, but also very complicated. So I'll leave that with you. Uh, Commissioner Jones, I understand, has been appointed um, by the governor's office to attend that as well. So hopefully next, sir, we can ride together and chat a little about on the way. So look forward to that. Uh, let's see. Also, I wanted to bring up, I was recently asked by the uh, North Carolina 911 board and the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners to serve in a strategic planning role uh, for next generation equipment for 911. I accepted because quite frankly, I wanna make sure we have a voice at the table. As you're all aware, the frustrations of trying to fund computers and, and items through the 911 board with our money, which I consider our 911 surcharge money. So having a seat there, I think, is vital, um, and I would look forward to doing that. Um, the reentry council commissioners came before you a couple of meetings ago, and I wanted to get some clarity. There was a, a budget request, I believe, for $2,000 that came forward. I have researched that and, and verified it. I'm not sure if you'd like to see that on an agenda or you want to wait till maybe the county budget to consider that it's completely the board's discretion it was for help with their website and also help with some of their office equipment i think it was a copier and a, and a cell phone if i'm not mistaken yeah, i think we should do that mr. 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 Chairman. yes i'd just like to say that uh, 
we need to, while we are full steam ahead, we need to continue on. They have to wait for pieces to fit the puzzle. I believe will make the program even slower. We way behind already. Mohead had theirs in operation, I know at least four or five years. Charlotte had theirs about eight or nine years in Raleigh. And all up the state, they, they, they had that their uh, re interest. And they've been getting money from the federal government all that long, and we've been sitting here trying to get started. I think we should go ahead and appropriate those funds. And that's, I, I, I would make a motion to that effect. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> what, what, what are we? Mr. <coughs> Mr. Singleton, when he came before you a couple of meetings ago and asked for a, um, an allotment of money for a website that they maintain, uh, a copy release, and a cell phone, it equated to $2,000 to finish up the fiscal year. And I mean, I'd be happy to provide additional information for a future agenda if that'd be more helpful to the board. Yeah. I just didn't know if you wanted to see it now or do you want to see it during budget? That's, that's my I, main I think point. we could go ahead and see it now because that's going to hold the program up even more so. Uh, I think what we're doing a great, we're, we're doing a great service to the community. Yeah. We're way behind, way behind other cities. And, and we, we're just playing catch up with our reentry program. And, and these other cities already spent, I don't know how many millions of dollars in their program. Yeah. They even have to spend out of that, out of that budget because they were already organized, they went on, went on with getting all the money they could. So I think we, we, we're way behind. We, we had a lot of problems in our society. In fact, I had a, uh, a young lady come by, was sitting on my front porch, she was Caucasian, didn't have no shoes on, and I don't tell her what she'd been taking. My wife went in the house and got a, some socks and shoes to put on to try to get up with the police department. It took the policeman almost an hour to get there. They did get there, but it took them almost an hour, but it was cold too, out there on the front porch. She bought it in the house. So we, we need all the help we can get. It, it, it's so many people on the streets now, you, you just couldn't imagine. Commissioner Sampson, uh, Sampson, I think what the county manager is saying is that he get us more information on it and we'll, we'll vote on it more our next meeting. We don't need more $2,000 to help somebody the way I can see it. Just going to give money away? We well, need to give no money away. The organization I would like to see a piece of paper working. that identifies what the specific request is. $2,000. I, I can go in my pocket and give them $2,000. Well, then, you're, you're welcome to do it. I know you, you, you don't get that one of yours get on the port, front porch with nowhere to go. Moving along. I got along. a motion on the floor now. When I give a second, I know it's all right. I, I got a second on We got a motion on the second. Yeah. Discussion. Commissioner Sampson, I think we all uh, support the reentry program. All well, what I'm saying, I, I got the motion on the floor. It, it's up to you to act on it. Okay. Uh, we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have I, a roll I call vote? finish with my discussion, Mr. All right. Chairman, if I, if I can. Uh, I support the reentry program. I support it the whole time, but. To, to request money and it not be on the agenda is kind of unusual, and, and, and I'm not comfortable with it. I I'm, I'm understand, perfectly sir. fine on getting it on the agenda and voting on it, up or down. Yes, sir. Uh, likewise. I, I understand. There, there's, I don't want to belittle anybody else's yep. efforts on this, but I have worked my rear end off to make certain that sure. this happens. And I think that in order to protect the sanctity of this program, we need to make certain that this stuff is done correctly. And if we, if, if there's a request for money, then let's see it on a piece of paper and bring it forward. Otherwise, the program itself will suffer from credibility. Yes, sir. My motive was an, an open request yes, from that entry. I just wanted yeah. to make sure I didn't miss the ball here and not do it when the board applied. I, I just want to say that no one on this board have worked hard as I have to get this program in this county. When I, when, I say at least, at least 25 or 30 cities have had this program before we even got it. And they have received government money to help their citizens. 
And now we are studying, arguing about a few dollars, $2,000. I don't think it's going to break the treasure. Commissioner but Sampson. But I'd just like to vote on and see how you vote. Well, Commissioner Sampson, I, I think we all recognize the work that you have done for this program. And all we're asking for is that we have more information given to us before we vote on a $2,000. Mr. Chairman, if I may, yes. I, I think we need to, I need to state for the record also, as Commissioner Tyson stated, I, I definitely am in support of the program. But I think we set a precedent if we vote on this without having additional information. Um, I don't think that's the right thing to do in uh, spending taxpayers' money. Um, for me not knowing more about this program and so I would I would definitely vote uh, no for it at this time. Call for the vote. They, they can vote okay. no if they want to. I don't want to see where they stand there. Commissioner Jones? No. Commissioner Weiner? This time no. Commissioner McCabe? This time yes. Commissioner Sampson? No. Yeah. Commissioner Tyson? No. Vice Chairman Dacey? No. Chairman Mark? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will uh, get a sheet for you. Yeah. Call sheet. Did you want to give out any dates? I don't know if you have them tonight on the budget in May and June, or do you want to wait on We can. We certainly can talk about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to update the board on the opioid task force, a progress report on that. As you're aware, last month um, we were able to come to agreement on the memorandum of understanding with Onslow County, Carter County, and City of Jacksonville on the short-term uh, crisis center there. Uh, that is moving forward quickly. I spoke with Sherry Slater. They're getting their paperwork ready to send to Raleigh, and that should happen this week. Uh, locally here, we have continued to meet with our uh, committee chairs, and we should be forming the task force in the next couple weeks. Uh, there's some strategic initiatives I'd like to brief you at at your next meeting to give you a full update on where we stand, but I wanted you to make sure you knew the effort was moving forward, and there's a a tremendous amount of interest and a tremendous amount of uh, folks who are willing to serve in this capacity, and I think it's uh, really off to a good start. And lastly, uh, last week, Mr. Hodges and I were able to uh, walk through the animal shelter. Progress is being had. Uh, we are in the short rows, as some people would like to say, of, of getting this thing open. Uh, there has been some discretion, I think, and I wanted to make sure I was clear tonight with the commissioners. We are still accepting dogs, but we are limiting the intake of cats at this time because we're transitioning from the old building to the new facility. And while we work and remodel the old facility, and then we'll, of course, move the cat areas uh, back into that building. So if the public would still be patient with us, understand it's difficult, but we, we are rapidly getting toward completion there. And, Mr. Chairman, my number seven was budget process on my list. Um, as we are uh, becoming close to that, my staff and, and, and I will begin working on that next week. I'm going to pull my calendar up if the board will indulge me. We can talk about May time frame. Um, I will present the budget uh, to the board on May 21st. And we can uh, schedule work sessions. I know that's a little far out for your calendar. But as our normal process, we would target the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. That would be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday after you receive it on Monday. And, of course, Friday is a holiday. And that would leave us, or excuse me, is Yes, Friday's a holiday. That will leave us uh, the 28th, 29th, and 30th is also additional days uh, to work on the budget. I'll be happy to go ahead and, and schedule that if those dates work for the board. We will have our public hearing on June 4th. That's our night meeting. And then based on previous processes and budget, we would look to adoption on June 18th. As you're aware, we normally have at least one work session between the 4th and the 18th. Okay. I guess we'll uh, have them get back to us on the dates. Sure. That's the dates. If, if there's any day that absolutely doesn't work for Commissioner, if they let us know that, we'll be happy to okay. note that in our files. Is the 28th not Memorial Day? Is that not a holiday? 28th Monday is a holiday. Okay. So we can work that Friday. I'm so sorry. 29th sir. and 30th? Yes. Yes, sir. So 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 29th, and 30th? Or the 25th now. Oh, yes, 25th. I got my holidays mixed up. The 30th may be a little bit of a problem. 
That's Commissioner Tyson's birthday, and I don't want to disturb that. You can work with that, but I won't be here. We'll get extra. Uh, we'll get extra meat on the subway that sub the, that day. Wasn't that the assembly day too? Yeah, so the thirtieth yeah, would be out because that would be county assembly day. day. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, that is my report. Unless the board has any questions or comments for me. Does anybody have any questions to the county manager? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Commissioner's reports. <coughs> Commissioner Tyson. Chairman, I have nothing to report at this time. Okay. Commissioner Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you will, I'm not trying to take up too much of our time tonight, I have uh, two things I'd like to share with the board. The first item I'd like to bring before the board is um, a, a possible resolution that I'd like for the board to consider. I definitely will state for the record I am not one that likes to jump and pass resolutions without having <coughs> adequate time to look at them uh, as a board, and so I respect that uh, if you feel that way. but. Um, March is National Women's History Month, and uh, we have prepared a resolution that I'd like to bring before the board, and it states, whereas the Craven County Board of Commissioners hereby acknowledges the important role of women in our society, and whereas women have made significant contributions to Craven County and the state of North Carolina, and whereas the Craven County Board of Commissioners believes that women should be respected and protected from violence at all times, and whereas the Craven County Board of Commissioners believes that women with equal qualification to those of men should receive equal consideration and compensation for jobs and other opportunities. And whereas the Craven County Board of Commissioners asserts that all women should be able to work in a safe environment which is free from all forms of discrimination, harassment, and violence. And whereas Craven County salutes all women locally and universally <coughs> who have throughout history shown tremendous wisdom, initiative, and fortitude in all the walks of life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Craven County Board of Commissioners recognizes March the 1st through 31st as National Women's History Month, honoring women who fight all forms of discrimination against women. Be it further resolved that Craven County is committed to eliminating all forms of violence and discrimination against women, to promoting the health and safety of women, and affording them equal economic and business opportunities. Further resolved that the Craven County Board of Commissioners strongly supports the role of women in Craven County and the contributions they have made and will continue to make in building a community that is a better place to live. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, as I have stated before, and I will not, uh, it's redundant to some in what I've said, uh, I was raised by my grandmother. Uh, I had the opportunity to go live with my grandparents when I was seven years of age. Uh, my grandmother passed away in July, one of the greatest women that I ever knew. Uh, she taught me about Jesus. She gave me opportunities in life that I would never have had otherwise. Uh, she was a wife of a farmer, a politician. Uh, she was a stay-at-home mom. She also helped on our farm. She worked in the church. And, you know, I know all of us that sit on this board have uh, ladies who have played a vital and important role in our lives. Um, I can even say to my wife today, I thank God for her and the role that she plays. And so I think that, you know, in recognizing the, the month of March as National Women's History Month for Craven County and also as being recognized, I think, across the United States, um, I, I'd like to offer a motion, if the chairman will entertain it, um, that this board pass this resolution. I'll make that motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in any discussion? Outstanding work. No discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. One additional. Uh, one additional item I'd like to bring before the board, and not trying to get into too much detail here. Um, all of us have a number of concerns that come before us um, on a daily basis. I think roadways, ditches are probably always at the top of the list for uh, the district in which I help represent. Uh, but over the past few months, the number one issue that has been addressed to me has been about um, animals, the concern over animals in our county and um, our animal shelter. 
uh, as the county manager stated, we're very blessed to have uh, invested uh, taxpayer dollars in an outstanding facility that's going to be state of the art. Uh, it will increase the capacity that we will be able to house uh, animals in. And um, we look forward to the next month when we will be able to open it up and, and, and begin a new journey. But with that, with having a new facility, I, I think we've got some things that we need to work on. And as I st said at the beginning, not to get into too much detail because of um, personnel items. But I would like to, with the chairman's agreement and the board's agreement, that um, we ask the county manager to begin looking at some options and how we can do a better job as Craven County government through our animal services and offering a better public relations with our citizens. I think we've got to work on it. That's the number one complaint. And um, I think our citizens deserve better. I would think that the board would agree with you, Commissioner Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have. To Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Liner. Sir, a couple things. Uh, American Legion Post 539, which I'm a member, is starting their drive again for the Boys and Girls State Program sponsorship. They've been doing this for the last couple of years. They're getting two boys and girls from uh, each of the high schools. It's upcoming uh, seniors uh, go to Catawba College for a week uh, studying uh, government. Uh, if anybody's interested for a sponsorship or a donation, I can definitely put you in contact. It's a great program. If you don't know enough about it, I got paperwork and everything here on it. Uh, they did it last year on their own, and it, it pretty much took the bank from us, so we're going out for donations and sponsorships to try to get in it. The kids have come back. Last year we had seven girls and one boy, so I don't know if the boys are not interested, but they... <laughs> put their applications in, the post will screen them and interview them and then make the selection. But it's a, it's a great program if anybody's interested. Uh, myself and Commissioner McCabe will be at Havelock Middle School tomorrow. And everybody else is, is welcome for the iPads. Step out for, for that school. And on Tucker Creek on March 20th, they will stand up their iPad program on that and you're more than welcome down in that area. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commissioner <coughs> Kay. Well, you took some out of my mouth, so I don't mention about the iPads. Uh, uh, last couple weeks ago, some of y'all wasn't here. Um, <coughs> it, uh, the Governor Cook awarded me an award. Um, it was the um, old North, old North Carolina Award, which is the second hot award you can receive for doing good work in your community and through the county. Uh, the Order of the Laundry Pond Award is an award that you have to have 30 years of service. I don't have 22 since I was in New York for a little while. So hopefully that uh, I get my 30 in and I'll throw another, throw another ball in there and uh, we have the governor at the time we, we, uh, give me the old, I mean the uh, Order of the Laundry Pond. And you don't get that, that type of recognition by sitting on your butt. I have worked very hard and very diligently in my community and through the county. I do more work than I was supposed to do as a commissioner. And it, stand, it speaks for itself. I tell everybody, if you want to see what I do to come in, in, the, in my community, go see my boat. Go to, go to the Craven uh, uh, County Web and you see what, what I have it done. So some people go around and listen to well. Commissioner, commissioner McCabe, you have done this, have done that. If you don't read, don't go to the meeting, you're not going to know. You can't just sit on your butt and look at the stars and say, hey, tell me, star, what's going to happen? You can't do that. So you want to know something in my community? Ask me. If I don't know, I ask someone to bring the information back to you. So I have worked very hard, and I deserve their award. <laughs> now, i got more to say, but I'm going to cut it short. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Chairman. OK. Commissioner Sampson? Yes, I guess I would like to give kudos to the women's and I, I remember how I was brought up and I remember my mother and 
Then I married my wife and had our, uh, had four girls and four boys. And I want all, all my girls to have the same opportunity all my boys have. I'm always ready to vote for the women to have their rights. I want everybody to have the rights. I had been denied my rights a lot of times. And I know how it feels not to even have my rights. And I don't know when or where the kind of going to this issue. But I'm with you all the way. Another thing I like to say is <clears throat> that why I was pushing for the weight on these properties because I feel like our citizens deserve the best. And uh, our citizens have been here the longest. We have senior citizens been here all their lives. And then come up and the property had to be, has to be taken from them because they're not able to pay the taxes. And I think being a county or city that we should look out better for our seniors to have something to offer them if they get so that their tax is behind and they can't pay them. Maybe all these programs we got, the, 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 the money and it looked like we could or, uh, even fit our application that we want to give money back to, or uh, help people pay the taxes to save their home. Person work 50, 60 years and sometime longer to pay for a home and then come up with laws to take the home away from them because they are not able to pay the taxes. I think that's an injustice. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Okay. Vice Chairman? I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Fine. Uh, I, only have to, I was at a Highway 17 meeting and uh, just want to bring you up to date on uh, the Mill Street to Bridgeton. Uh, on 40 to 43, uh, the right of way of utilities will begin on 2020 for 7.7 .7 million, and construction will begin in 2022, which will be 28.5 million. And uh, US 17 Washington bypass to Williamston, uh, their acquisitions will be start in 2019 and construction beginning in 2020 for 51.7 million dollars. So. Uh, those are two roads that we're looking to get completed, and finally it's on its way. Uh, if there are no other comments by the commissioners, I would uh, ask for, oh, we have a closed session. Closed session. I'm sorry about Mr. that. Mr. Marshall, going to close session. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, closed session.